Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens and Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. And yeah, it is a little warm in here. Uh, who knew I was running the furnace a week ago and now I'm actually kind of sweating and it's almost bedtime. So we'll see if I get sleep with all that heat. Uh, but anyway, let's dive into the pens. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, um, I guess I'm, I'm going to say a couple of controversial things, but uh, let's, let's throw something fun in for the comments. Is there a video that, or a movie coming out that interests you? I know there aren't very many movies coming out, but uh, I guess Hollywood has gotten going again, so... Uh, yeah, is there anything coming out you're excited to see? And you'll see why I bring that up here. So let's take a look at the pens. All right, so these are, excuse me, wow. These are the pens that I've been using this week. This is a uh, Platinum Izumo, back from getting cleaned out. Actually, I didn't clean it out. I just refilled it with the same ink because uh, I wanted to write with it again. Uh, P Pilot Custom 823, Reform 4383, Reform 1745. Nakaya Decapod Twist, a Cora. You can tell I haven't had supper yet. I'm a little shaky. Um, Waterman Karen, Lamy 2000, Pedicon Stola 3, and an Aurora 88. <clears throat> and of course, my new custom is I will be filming everything in my, not in my Bomo Art Journal, but in this uh, Cognitive Surplus. So, my first pen up is this Platinum Izumo, which is uh, always a beautiful pen. I had it uh, ready to be cleaned out, and I just wanted to write with it again. So rather than clean it out, I just refilled it with the same ink. There's no harm in that. Um, heck, you can refill a pen many, many times with, without cleaning it. As long as you don't switch inks on it. So this is the Platinum Izumo. I actually blame Chris Rap 52 for me inking this up this week. He had uh, purchased a Platinum President with a coarse nib. This is a Platinum President coarse nib. The difference between mine and his is mine has been ground, of course, to a cursive italic. Coarse is Platinum's word for double broad. Uh, the ink in this one is Iroshizuku. Yuyake. Which I think is a nice shading orange. I guess maybe vaguely reminiscent of the Noodler's Apache Sunset. I don't know. A little better, better behaved because this one actually dries. Uh, too many of the Noodler's inks just don't dry. And what I've been told is, well, use crappy paper and then they'll dry. Well, I I like the colors and I want to see them. They look so good on this, but after a day or two, then they don't dry on this. And, uh, frustrating. So, so you don't see Noodler's inks in use in my pens very often. Is, uh, I guess I could use them at school on that paper. Oh, didn't forgot to tell you. So last week I uh, gave you the end of the... <laughs> Sorry, I just drew a complete blank. Uh, last week I just gave you the end uh, results of the P Pilot Custom 823 that had that disinfectant incident. This, by the way, is not more disaster. This is me peeling off the sticker and there's still glue on it. So, no, I didn't dip this in more <laughs> disinfectant. Uh, but Anyway, so this is the one I had purchased to replace it, and I decided to get a broad nib because, you know, if at some point I decide I need a fine point, there we go. But I am looking. The more I look, though, the, I realize that, yeah, I can probably salvage. Ooh. Okay, I, I've got a couple projects laying here that will be in upcoming videos, and uh, I think I have too many projects laying here. They all decided to come out and play all at once. 
but anyway, this, uh, I mean, it's a little frosted, so it's not perfect, but, uh, this didn't have the cracking like the barrel did. So, uh, you know, if I can find a new barrel, everything else in it is fine. So, I, I've been kind of looking for parts, pens, you know. Nib is like the most expensive part. I suppose, you know, if I get desperate, I could sell the nib, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. I was also uh, suggested a few options for putting the pilot nib into a different pen that would work, so that's a possibility as well. Uh, the ink in it is just plain old boring pilot blue. I had a bottle of it, finally wrote my way through it. I wasn't super thrilled with it. It, it came with the original Pilot Custom 823. Uh, and now I've got another bottle of it to work my way through. I, I will say that this bottle seems to be slightly better behaved on the lower cost paper than, the, uh, than my first bottle. And it's not quite as uh, smelly. Uh, Pilot inks, not the Orochizuku, their standard Pilot, kind of have a formaldehyde type of smell. But uh, I'm not noticing it as strong with this one. But I'm also, if you can't tell, a little stuffed up because um, all of my viewers on the West Coast know why. Uh, we, you're having a hellish experience with uh, climate change causing uh, forest fires on a massive scale. And here in North Dakota, we're getting the, your smoke. I don't know if I've seen a blue sky yet in September. Have I seen a blue sky? Maybe a day or two after it rained. But yeah, you look up at the sun at the afternoon and it's just orange or red. Because huh, all the smoke in the air. So it is spread as far as North Dakota. And I feel it. I, I'm sensitive to that to smoke. And uh, I could never live in a place with a lot of smog and air pollution because it would stuff up my sinuses, I'd never be able to breathe, and I'd be coughing all the time. So, uh, yay, smog. So my next pen is, uh, Reform 4383, which is that interesting, uh, sort of triangular pen. Uh, turns out to be kind of a fun pen to write with. It's just not, you know, the... Uh, it, it didn't do too well on its first day of being inked up um, when I did its first impression. But now it's fun. Oh, look. Oh, there we go. I'm not sure if that was my fault or the pen's fault. Uh, so this ink is a Noodler's ink. One that I like the color very much. Noodler's Purple Mountain Majesties. Majesty? No, Majesties. E I uh, well, that looks like hell. And of course, it struggled a little bit there twice. And you know, when I've been writing letters with it, I don't notice that struggle, so I'm not sure if it's what I do as part of pens and use or what the dealio is. Or maybe it's this specific paper. That's always a possibility. Uh, but anyway, very nice color. And uh, this one seems to be drying very well. But this paper is also a bit more absorbent than some of my other papers. So maybe that's it. Uh, this pen was also doing the hard start thing when I first inked it up. At, uh, it's Reform 1745. This is a student pen. I was just looking over here to see if I have any reform pens upcoming as reviews. I think I do. I do. I gotta do a first impression of this. No, that's a Rex pen. Never mind, I saw the R and got excited. Are you a reform? No, you're a senator. And you're a central pen. Okay, it doesn't look like I have any reforms over here for upcoming reviews. What are you? Oh, that I have already reviewed. That's over here for a totally different reason, but one of my projects. 
Okay, not seeing it. So I bought this nice fold-out desk and it seems to stay folded out. Alright, this sink is Rohrer and Klingner. Helianthus. Um, I love yellow ink. I really like, um, for example, Private Reserve Buttercup. Beautiful, beautiful color. Just about unusable uh, for any practical purpose. Because it's so pale, it's unreadable. This is an ink that's readable. And it's still beautiful. So we win. So this next pen I would have sworn was cleaned out. So imagine my surprise when I went to fill it and... Woo, there's blue ink in it. And then I had to look back like a month. I mean, I have this pen's been sitting there. I've been thinking, oh, I should clean that here and ink it up again. And finally went to do it. And, huh, had ink in it already. Imagine that. So, uh, my Nakaya Decapod Twist. Squirrel Edition. And now that I write this, I realize I can't picture that I did much writing with this. So I feel like I must have just in my brain decided it was it was a uh, fault or it was used up. And uh, oh, I should clean that out one of these evenings and didn't get to it. It's been kind of a busy time for me. And uh, yeah, I had to look back, see what the ink even was. Iro Shizuku, because I was about to write. Uh, unknown blue but I thought no there is a reason you have started pens in use all those years ago is to see what pe whoops Shinkai not Kane uh, to see what pens and inks you use week after week and uh, the show kinda developed from that point but yeah I've got notebooks formerly Bomo art journals that were full of how to write or uh, what I was writing with so and I also, when I ink up a pen, I write down what I put in it. So I've got notebooks, so I just said, don't be lazy there, squirrel. Just look up what's in it. So I did. Shinkai, which is a nice, very blue-black type of color. Right, my Cora is still going strong, still inked up. Uh, ODE did a video this week where he did uh, some gray pens. And I don't know, I immediately thought of this one. You know, I was on a kick of only buying uh, slim black pens right at that moment. But, uh, dang. <laughs> this is a nice pen. And nice looking, nice uh, writing. It's just nice. Um, I will admit that this ink, although it was sent to me with good intentions, it doesn't really do anything for me. But I had a good suggestion in my comments, I think it was last week, uh, that I should take the bottle and use it at school, since I'm looking at cutting back to just two pens there. So, that would be a way to use it up. Purple's a nice ink to stand out. I can, I think my Aurora style will be happy drinking it, and uh, I can slowly use the ink up, because, yeah, like I said, it doesn't do anything for me one way or the other. It just, meh, that's purple. <laughs> so, so, anyway, my next pen is this Waterman Karen. Uh, Chris Rapp did a video on this pen also this week. He had a different nib in it. Maybe that was part of his problem. But he was not super impressed. Ooh, I got ink on here somehow. We'll just wipe it off of my ink cloth. He was not super... Actually, it was clear, so I think it was condensation, not ink. All right, he was not super impressed with it. But then... He had a different nib. He complained that it was stiff, which it is. Uh, I have a broad on it. It took me a bit of searching before I finally found a broad nib. Most of the U.S. Re all the U.S. retailers seem to only sell fine and medium. So I uh, forget the name of the retailer, but I finally found one in the U.K. that had it, and you know, I spent the money for it because that's how I roll. Uh, the ink in it is diamine. Autumn Oak. 
And I like this uh, nice restrained color. You know, I grew up in the East Coast in Pennsylvania, actually. And uh, one of the things I miss out here in North Dakota is the mountainsides all with all the trees turning color. Because here, well, we don't have many trees, and those we do have tend to either turn yellow or brown and fall off. So that's one of those things I miss from the East Coast. Uh, surprisingly, this pen is usually one, this next pen is one that I usually am inking up like every week or so, maybe sometimes twice a week. And I haven't been this year. Well, why? Because uh, I, have diff I have a set of school pens and I have a set of home pens this year for some silly reason. And this one is just not seeing the use. Now, I think in a few more weeks it'll start seeing more use. It's just been, a, like I said, a busy few weeks. And I get home and uh, just not getting a lot of my stuff done, more school stuff. But the beginning of school is always a busy time. October generally slows down, so I'm really looking forward to that. Although with this COVID thing, everything is up in the air. Who knows? We could end up online learning again. Some schools in the state have already had to do that. And I am going to pause here. So as I draw this, if you heard that alarmy type sound, I have spaghetti squash in the oven. that I need to take out. But you know what? I'm going to let it cook just a teeny bit longer. I'm going to let it cook just a teeny bit longer and I'm going to finish up these pens. Because then I can just press stop and uh, won't have to edit out a big long break. And I think the squash can handle a few more minutes in the oven. So this is a Pelican Stola 3. This is what I've been using at school and funny enough, I'm inking it up like once a week twice a week it's getting all the use of the Lamy 2000 and it holds less ink I believe and it keeps uh, stowing away in my shirt pocket and coming home with me it's just a very well done lower cost pen by Pelican same ink in it. I have a liter bottle to use up, so not that that's going to happen very quickly, no matter how well I use this ink. And uh, this year, thanks to uh, the virus, I don't feel like I want to do a pen giveaway. So I. I'll have maybe a few students using my ink, but not very many. Most, you know, they think fountain pens are cool, but most of them don't want to do the work to keep them up. You know, the constant refilling, the occasional cleaning. They don't want to mess with that. And my final pen is an Aurora 88 that was uh, on the same tray as that poor... Pilot Custom 823, but whereas I could afford to replace the pilot, I can't do it all the time, but I could afford to replace that Pilot Custom 823, if this pen had been zotzed by that disinfectant, that would have been it. So not very Jupiter-y looking, but it's the Jupiter finish, so whatevs. I was just thinking uh, the other day, I was a book, and I can't remember the book, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, one of the things in it is humans couldn't live on Earth anymore because aliens from Jupiter had said, hey, Earth is off limits. And uh, everybody was living on, you know, the moon and Mars and whatever. And I'm trying to remember what all was going on there. Anyway, they were getting the, the humans were getting advice from people from other solar systems that had also been displaced by these aliens that live on planets like Jupiter. So I guess these were the super aliens or something. Anyway, totally forgot the name of the ink as I was telling that little story. Aroshizuku. So if you can remember 
if you can have a clue what story that is, I'd sure like to know, because nothing's coming to me right now. Mura, stop talking and read your spelling, doggone it. Mura, there, see, you screwed up. Murasaki Shikabu. Kind of getting low in the pen, I... Well, I got a little something to tell you about pens in use right at the right after I finish this writing sample that uh, may or may not set your mind at ease. So, those are the pens and inks that I've been using. Uh, and I think that this paper is doing not as well as the original BOMO art journal. You know, there's a little bit of bleed through, but not bad. Alright, so those are the pens I have been using this week. Or have I? Yes, this episode of Pens in Use is late yet again. And I started thinking about, well, why is that? Well, what I have done previously during the school year is I generally film Pens in Use on Sunday uh, after the week. You know, and then I would broadcast the episode like five days later on, on Friday, and it all worked out. Well, not so much this year. I don't know at what point I got behind, but yeah, now I'm filming on Sunday to publish on Sunday, and that's not working so well. So I decided this week to cheat, and I have filmed two pens in use. So far I've done the writing samples, now I'm filming the other part. And uh, hopefully we'll be on time. Uh, but it, it did mean fudging things a little bit and faking in uh, one of the other videos, and I'll let you guess which one. So, it was either this one or the one you're going to see on Friday. But uh, the topics are genuine, they're picked out, and uh, so uh, I just had a few things I wanted to bring up. I've actually got a really big one for this week. Uh, next week I'll be uh, doing a Pens on the Road to Hedinger, North Dakota, and we'll take a brief detour on the way to Bucyrus because... Well, it's a town of 25 people, so I don't know that I can do a whole video on Bucyrus, but uh, heading where I can. So, we'll do that next week. So, one thing, uh, you know, at, at the beginning I suggested a possible topic. Um, is there a movie coming out that you're interested in? I, I, the reason I bring that up, I've been interested to see that there is a new version of Dune coming out. Uh, Frank Herbert's Dune. Uh, you may have seen the David Lynch movie in the night in 1984. Not, not one of his better movies. And I'll be honest, if I hadn't read the book, I think I would have been sitting there through the whole movie going, "Huh?" You know, having read the book at that point, I knew what was going on, but mm, uh, not like I said, not one of his better efforts. Um, some cool things in it, but. Mm. There was a mini-series put out by the Sci-Fi Channel. Um, I don't know, and since I moved to North Dakota, uh, I, I found it on DVD. No longer own the DVDs because I don't own a DVD player anymore. But, uh, you know, it tried to be more true to the book. But at the same time, it was very uh, limited budget. So to get around that, they made it much like a stage production. Like you could tell, almost everything was done on a set. And... Uh, very odd costuming. Uh, Ian McNeese as the Baron I thought was quite good. Um, I don't know if Sting or whoever it was played um, Faden in the miniseries. I don't know if I really care for either one of them. Uh, let's see. I didn't really like either of the Pauls. Um, one was Kyle McLaughlin. I forget the other guy's name. He was blonde, which immediately messed with my head because I thought, no, Paul isn't blonde. He, According to the book, he's small, starts out the book at age 15, he's dark-haired, but, and young-looking. So, uh, you know, at least Kyle McLaughlin had the dark hair right. He wasn't, uh, he was too old for the role, I think. So I'm kind of pleased that they've got a younger-looking actor for, uh, Paul in the, this newest movie. I, uh, I've never seen him act, though, so I don't know how good he is, um, what is his name? I wrote it down here. Timothee Chamolet. 
something like that. Never heard of him. Whoops. And uh, my notebook just went into hibernation. This is a product that I may talk about in a future video, but not today, because uh, I'm still investigating it. But And uh, I didn't like either of the gurneys. Um, you know, the gurney Halleck in the 1984 version, um, Jean-Luc Picard, um, Patrick Stewart, sorry, um, just wasn't right. Maybe it's because by then I knew him as Jean-Luc Picard, but uh, he's supposed to be an ugly man. Same thing in this newest movie. It's not the character described with ink vine scars all over his face. Um, and we have Jason Momoa, who is, uh, what's his name, Khal Drogo from Game of Thrones as Duncan Idaho. I'm. He didn't really have to... You know, you couldn't tell how well he was acting in the Game of Thrones because he never spoke English. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I do kind of like the worm in this new one. I, I didn't care for the three-part mouth that the miniseries and the old movie did. And one thing I thought was kind of cool, at least in the trailer, is they used uh, Pink Floyd's Eclipse from uh, their album Dark Side of the Moon. Because uh, if you know your Dune movie history... David Lynch wasn't the first one to look at doing Dune as a movie. It was actually a gentleman named uh, Jodorowsky. I forget his first name. He's, uh, what country is he from? I don't remember. But anyway, he uh, actually did a lot of work, spent several years of his life planning out how to do Dune. Um, he, he had his son training for a couple years so his son could play the role of Paul. Uh, he wanted Pink Floyd to provide the music. He had Salvador Dali to play the Emperor. Um, he had... What was his name? Marlon Brando was going to be the Baron. You know, he, he had big names lined up. He, uh, he, he lined up all kinds of artists and everything. He had Hans Geiger, who went on to become well-known for the movie... A lot of special effects, including the movie Alien... Um, so a lot of things came out of it, but his ne movie never happened. And, and then there was the whole, oh yeah, and we're going to need about a 10 hour movie to do this. That I think the theater, the studios finally said, ah, no. <laughs> and so that became one of those works that could have been, but never was. And maybe it's just as well, because it fertilized a lot of other projects. And, uh, some of his ideas, I just thought. Uh, I don't know that the Baron is going to live in a castle that looks like his head where you land on his tongue. That's just weird. And he threw in a whole bunch of extra stuff. Um, what the uh, Duke was supposed to be a eunuch and Paul came to be because somehow blood cell got fertilized or whatever. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I, and, and oh yeah, and then the planet at the end of the movie was supposed to go off fertilizing the galaxy and... Yeah, I think it's just as well it didn't happen. But I thought it was a nice callback to that movie. So anyway, I'm excited to see it. I did put a link to the trailer in the video description if you haven't seen it yet. <clears throat> so, rant over. Uh, next week will be much calmer. I know because I'm about to film next week. Uh, and after that we should be all on the level and I should be able to get these videos out actually on time for a change and uh, do much better. So uh, again, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And you know that pens in use is always going to have some kind of discussion on something, sometimes serious, sometimes not. And uh, my microphone wants to quit here. And uh, yeah, I, I just also invite you, I, I talked about Dune. If this weren't a COVID year, I don't like watching movies in the theater, but I think that's a movie I would go see in the theater instead of waiting till it comes out on video. But because of the virus, I don't go places that I don't need to go, so uh, I will not be watching it in the theater. I'll be waiting till it comes out on video, but I am excited to see it. And I'm probably going to spend this fall and first part of winter till it comes out rereading all six books in the series. I don't know that I really care if I read the uh, the group of books by Brian Herbert and what's his name, Kevin something or other. 
that wrote all the other Dune novels, because, frankly, they're not as good. But, uh, anyway, I definitely will read the original Frank Herbert novels. So, I want to thank you for watching. And comment down below about something, a movie that's upcoming, or a book that's upcoming, or something that has you excited. So, I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.